Okay, everybody. So, welcome to part two of the Saab Goblin 500 setup and castle data log video. Alright, so now we're actually going to go over the data logs uh, of the ICE 100. This is probably going to be of the last six to eight flights. I would say the last four flights have been the first four flights with the Griffin BEC, so it'll be interesting to see if there's any changes. But it's not too many flights in this data log. So most likely we're looking at maybe eight flights at the most. Maybe ten, I doubt it, but most likely I would say eight flights. But let's take a look. Alright, so hopefully everybody can see this. Ideally I should be using video recording software on my desktop, but well you know. Can't have everything. Alright, so let's go to logging. Put it here so you can see. We're going to download log data. I have not seen these graphs yet, so you and me will be looking at them at the same time. And we'll see the results. I'm not expecting any big variations, so. As you can see, I actually log everything. You can choose what you want to log mode, RPM, control the motor, output, control the input throttle, control temperature, battery current, battery ripple, battery voltage. All very interesting things, even though I'm not really sure what the hell battery ripple is. So. But other than that, battery voltage, current temperature, throttle, uh, motor power output, and motor RPM are all very important. So I keep them all logged. These are your sampling frequencies, how often it's going to sample. So uh, if you sample every 10 hertz, you're only going to get 6 minutes of recording time, 13, 34 an hour if it's every 1 hertz. All right, so these are the data logs. Enlarge this so you can see them. Alright, now let's make sure. Yeah, these aren't. You have to make sure that your setup is correct to get the right RPM. So I'm going to change, um, I'm going to change the motor pole count and gearing. This is set up for my 450. Actually, no, it's set up for a different motor. Um, as we know, we're using 1350 KVs, it's a 10 pole. And the motor pinion gear we use, it's 16 uh, pinion, 16 teeth on a pinion, and 165 you should use. Now technically it is a 3 uh, ratio, but this works in translating the 3 ratio to a 2 ratio. Um, not really sure on all the mathematics, but if you go to the forums, they tell you basically use 165 teeth on the main gear and whatever pinion you're using. These are right from the motor. We're using 1350, 10 pole, and that should change our RPMs respectively. Okay. So if we see how many sessions we have, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This was probably something where I was just testing electronics. So like I said, last eight flights. Um, I have highlighted the power out, the RPM, and the current. Let's get rid of this dead band here. What session is this? That is session four. So session four, let's get rid of. View sessions, choose sessions. So it looks like session four. that. Yeah, there we go. Got rid of that big dead session there. There's some other sessions we don't need, but you know, this gives us a good idea. So, if we look at our RPMs, our average is 2494, our max is 2694. Now, if you look at it, it's relatively flat because I'm running 2600, right? And if you go through any particular session, you'll see um, right here, I don't know if you can actually, let's see, can you see my finger? Yeah, you can. So if you look at the RPM, it's 2618. If you just go to another section, 2605, 2622. So if you see, it's relatively controlled at around 2600 RPM, which is what it's supposed to be. It's governed, right? So that's what it's supposed to do, 2600 RPM. Um, the blue is our power out. So it shows how much power outage during the flight. Now, the pattern here is it's low power outage in the beginning. But as we go through the flight, um, there's a higher power outage, most likely because it's a drop in voltage. Um, that's what I'm assuming, right? Because if we let's get a voltage, we can click on the voltage. You'll see how the voltage drops, and so in order to make up for the voltage drop, we have a higher power outage. That's what I'm saying. From my, that's basically my my understanding from basically uh, surmising. It could be wrong. So if, if you want to correct me on that, if the power outage is getting higher 
for some other reason, let me know. But it looks like it's getting higher as the voltage drops. Uh, voltage, is, I'm not going to keep that up there because you get too many stuff, too many things on these graphs, it gets confusing. The voltage is always going to drop, right? It's going to start high, it's going to drop. And it's pretty consistent throughout each flight. Um, the average you can't really look at, and you can look at it, it gives you something, but it doesn't help because it averages in like zero RPMs. So like for, you know, in the beginning of the flights, it averages this in. So when you look at that, that doesn't really give you a good idea. It gives you some idea, but it's not, you know, it averages in, you know, the, the points where you're, you're putting on a canopy, for example, like on a goblin, it takes for me, I don't know, a good two minutes to put on a canopy. So all this dead time, it, it averages in. So you got zero RPMs for like a good 60 seconds, which it averages in here. So, you, you know, you can't really look at the average to get a, an average. Let's put it what's actually going on during the flight. It's just during, you know, when the ESC is turned on and when the ESC is turned off. Uh, all right, so let's get rid of the voltage. Now, here's what we're looking at. What's current? That is something we definitely want to look at. Um, now, if you look at it, for the most part, your midi portion is right around here. And if you look at your your current measurement, it's the average. Again, it's hard to look at the average because you got a lot of dead stuff like here. There's obviously zero current. Um, it's averaging, let's, it says 35.4 amps out of these eight sessions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, so out of these eight sessions, it's averaging 35. And if you again, you take into consideration of the dead, the dead area here and the dead area here, you know, the, the dead area is in the beginning and the end of flight. You're probably the, av the actual average is probably more like 40 to 50. But even 40 to 50 is fine because it's a 100 amp ESC. That's not the point of concern. The point of concern is this: these spikes, these spikes. If you look right here, the maximum is 111, which is actually it's better than I was getting a little bit before. I was getting sometimes 120, 140. So right here, the maximum current that you see is 111. Now I'm wondering if that has to do, like these last four fights were with the new BEC. These are with the Griffin. So actually, I'm going to say this. The Griffin has lowered those spikes. I mean, this one over here looks like 51. But even that, that's fine. That's actually fine. 51 amps for 100 amp EFC. That's actually very good. So I'm actually that that I was unexpected. I thought we were gonna have like here these with the old BC, the Castle Pro. I mean, literally, that's the difference between these four flights, which I know I only did two yesterday, two today. We're getting you know spikes of what's that? Look at that spike is around fifty one where my or sixty eight where my mouse at, which is not bad. Um, but if you go here, this is with the last four. Now, this the only difference between these four flights the only, on my helicopter is the BEC. So it was actually very interesting. Um, this, if you look at this spike, it gets to 60. This spike is pretty high. It's well over 103. Uh, again, within the rating, a little bit over if you consider it 100. Now, some people say Castle overrates its stuff, so, you know, who knows. But that's not bad, that's 103, but it's still a relatively big. It's a short spike, but it's there, you know. Um, nothing sustained. But noticeably different with these four flights, you don't, I don't see a, a really high spike. Um, these four flights, at least these two, definitely. This one seems okay, but these, these three did some spikes. That's not bad. Now here's the big concern, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's the temperature. Now, I haven't put temperature up, you'll see. Um, and what I'm going to do after that, I'm going to get rid of some of these sessions so we can get a better, uh, a more zoomed in perspective. So, let's look at the temperature. Bang. Now, that is what concerns me. Um, let's just look over here. These are one of the last flights. So, if you look at the temperature, uh, it's averaging. And again, the average is a little deceiving because you have these dead, you know, these spots where the heli isn't smarted up yet. The ESC is just starting. You're waiting for the heli to spool up. So this, uh, at, at, at the dead spot, so let's say before the actual motor starts running, we're looking at just an ambient temperature of 82.7, which is approximately right. I mean, these days have been about 80, 80 some odd degrees outside in New York. Um, and then let's see how it climbs. It climbs, you know, I'm just, this is where my mouse is. So I'm looking at this particular session and now 98, which, you know, is, I guess, acceptable considering, you know, you're starting up and, and the ambient temperature is 80, but then... 100, 107, 113, 116, 120, where it's not even a quarter way through the flight. 27, 33, 130 degrees, 109, uh, 145 degrees. Midway through flight, we're looking at 
about 140, 950 degrees, you know, looking at the, um, where my position is. Now, I know you looking at it probably aren't seeing the same detail as I am because I'm looking, you know, all right, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get rid of a lot of these. I'm going to concentrate on the last two sessions. So we'll go to view, session. I'm sorry for the bad camera work here. Like I said, I should have just really used some recording so far. I'm a little lazy. Alright, bang. So those are the last two sessions. That looks a lot better. You can see what's going on now. My apologies for that crowded uh, area there. But it was good for me, at least, to see the difference between the B, C, and the current spike. So here, blue is power output, which I'll turn off because, you know, not too much concerned about the power output now. But So the, what we're looking at, RPMs. RPMs, and again, not that interesting. It's governed, so it's pretty much a constant 2600 RPMs from here to here. Right? What I'm looking at is temperature for the purple or pink, and the green, we're looking at the current. All right, we already looked at the current. The current's not too bad. It's this temperature. Temperature, halfway through the f last, uh, second to last flight is, again, looks like it tops out halfway through, not tops out, but at halfway through, 149, 150 degrees. Same thing in this flight as, it's about 150 degrees halfway through. And obviously it's gonna climb, and, well, it peaks. It climbs and climbs, right? So it goes, it goes, it peaks out around 162 degrees. Now, to the touch, when I take that canopy off and I put my finger on it, it's, it'll burn you. I mean, obviously, 162 degrees. Now, is that dangerous for the electronics? Is that what the electronics are actually going through? I don't know. I'm not sure how these temperatures. Now, I've read um, comments on HeliFreak. I've read, you know, castle ratings that it can handle up to 220 some odd degrees. Um, in all my logs, this is pretty much consistent. You're going to get 160 some odd degrees for the temperature. Now, this is what I'm w wondering, and um, this is sort of a video response, or it is a video response to uh, uh, Nitro Kyosho. Um, I'd like to see if he's willing to post his data log, because he has his castle on the outside, and he's using a higher rated, he's using the 130. So I'd like to see what his graphs look like, because... Um, like I said, nothing in this graph bothers me. The current did bother you, but now the current's not bothering me too much because it's within specs. I mean, right here, if you look at these two graphs and if you look at the current, it's averaging, again, including the dead space, uh, 64 amps, which is fine. It's rated at 100. That's great. Um, so even the spikes and your, your highest spike is 64 amps. You know, It's averaging 35. It's, it's, it's spiking at 60, which is fine. If that stays that way, I have no concern about the current, which is great. What I am concerned about is that temperature, because obviously that can burn something out. So what I'd like to know is, well, anybody who's familiar with um, running 500 size helis, is that temperature acceptable? And will it damage the ESC? Um, because that's really going to be the point of whether I get a new ESC or relocate ESC. I'm probably unlikely to relocate it because I just don't like it on the side. I know, it's a matter of aesthetics, but we buy the Goblin partially because of aesthetics, right? Um, it's a great looking helicopter. I mean, if you just want a regular 500 to throw, you know, the electronics any which way, you could do that. Um, and I've seen all different types of setups. I like to do clean wiring. I look at the way to do my wiring and my, my positioning of electronics the cleanest way possible. Um, on my 450 Pro, you can barely see any wiring, but, you know, I like the uh, clean look. So anyway, I'm not going to put it on the outside. So most likely I'll upgrade the ESC either to the Contronic or the YGE. Most likely the YGE is the cheaper of the two and seems to be very reliable and small. So uh, I don't want to change the placement of the, the ESC because it's made to go there. I mean, come on. Uh, you know, and this is not just on the Goblin 500 and the 700 on the on the uh, 770, on the 630, that's where it goes, you know, so why should you have to put it on the side? Of course, you know, obviously for uh, safety reasons, but if it's made to do that, and it's been, you know, the 500 is new heli, but the 700, the 600 series, I mean, they're well tested. There's no reason why it shouldn't go there. I mean, Bert Cram, uh, I, I can't pronounce the name, Kramer, I mean, he flies it that way. I mean, why can't we? You know what I mean? So... If Bert can do it, I mean, I'm my my mild sports flying and bare 3D can certainly do it. 
Um, so I just don't see any reason why it should be on the outside. Especially it has a heat sink. It's supposed to have some heat dissipation. Now, we do understand that there's no airflow through the canopy. That's just the way goblins are designed. So. so here's my question. So is 160 degrees acceptable? The current, and is the current acceptable? I mean, I look at it, it looks well within specs to me. The current looks well within specs and actually looks pretty good. I mean, again, I wasn't, what I do? Most, I, I did some flips, I did some rolls, um, inverted hovering. I didn't do any funnels. I haven't done, I can do funnels, but not with the goblin yet. Uh, no TikToks, nothing like that. So, I mean, that's what you're looking at in terms of flight. So, there should be nothing. I should have done some punch outs, but I didn't. So, that's not here. So, maybe that would have wider current spike. Uh, let's see. Anything else? There's nothing really. I mean, there's other stuff. Voltage, like I said, is not that interesting. It's just, you know, obviously going to start and go down. It starts at what? Should be what? Uh, 24, right? 25 and go down to, we can look at the end. Uh, 22. All right. So yeah, voltage is not that interesting. Current's already on there. I don't know what ripple is. Uh, you want to explain to me what ripple is? Go ahead. <laughs> uh, watts. Uh, watts seems to uh, mirror current to a certain degree. I can turn off current. We can look at watts. I mean, doesn't really seem any big wattage draws either. Yeah. Okay, turn current back on. RPMs, we already have throttle in. That's obviously going to be very uninteresting because we're governed. So this is basically going to be, um, what, 70% throttle. So it's, it's very uninteresting because we're governed. Power out, uh, that's a little interesting because it shows you how much power, I'm assuming, the ESC is giving the motor. No, that, that's exactly what it is. So uh, as you go further into flight, you have to give the motor more power, assumingly because it's getting less voltage. So that makes sense. Less voltage, more power. Um, and amp hours, that's really uninteresting. That's sort of like time. Yeah, it just goes up and up. Yeah, it's really not that interesting. But I mean, that's why I do like Castle though. This reason right here that you get a lot of information, just uh, a lot of information to analyze. Like, you know, like I said, you can analyze, take off the RPM, take off the temp, take off the uh, current, and you get an interesting, you know, you see the voltage go down and the power out go up. So, I mean, you see uh, something which at least gives you a good theory as to why this is going up and why this is um, decreasing. Well, we know why this is decreasing because you're using power and power is going down. But then you need more power out from the ESC. Um, but especially RPM temperature, just really interesting and good piece of data to have. One thing... I like about castles. Regardless of anything else you say about them, those particular, this particular point of it, the information that you get is just really impressive. And then again, you see what I can do. You can select what session, you can edit it, so on and so forth. So that's about it. Anybody has any uh, recommendations as far as uh, whether those temperatures are acceptable up to 160 degrees during the end of flight? And again, my flights are about four and a half minutes maximum, five minutes if you know my landing takes a little bit longer. So I'm not flying it very long. So you could probably, if you did, you know, you could probably get, if you did real mild flying with 5,000, I'm using um, a 4,000 milliamp uh, 40C uh, relatively cheap batteries, guys. I'll admit that. Turn energy. I only got one. So uh, I'm, I have some more in order. So I know the guys using the pulses and the guys using um, better batteries. They might have uh, different graphs. And again, that's where the castle comes into play. At least these graphs are good to look at. Um, but for right now, it's, uh, you know, the batteries seem to be relatively solid, or battery, I should say, relatively solid. All right, I don't want to go keep blabbing. Um, you see what you got, and um, let's see. Any information? Any responses? Any comments? If you think I'm an idiot, good. You know, I live in New York. I've been called much worse. So <laughs> let me know what you think. Uh, but really, uh, let me know basically the temperatures, what I'm concerned about, and the current. Alright guys, so until next time, which there probably won't be because I'm not a big video YouTube guy. <laughs> See ya.